This is ABC 15 News, the 6 o'clock difference. A sad day in the Valley as a brotherhood of officers says goodbye to one of their own. And a Valley resort closes its doors after nearly 50 years. What's coming up next? We'll tell you. And another airline adding more charges to its tickets. How much can you expect to shell out the next time you need to fly? It has been a very rough ending to a very long week for Valley Police Officers. Good evening to you and thanks for being with us. I'm Jonathan Elias. And I'm Katie Rammel. This morning, the Brotherhood of Officers said their final goodbyes to one of their own. All while they prepare to do it all over again tomorrow. Today, nearly 2,000 people turned out for Officer Jason Wolf's funeral. The 27-year-old was killed in the line of duty Saturday night. He and another officer, Eric White, were killed after entering an apartment where a gunman opened fire. ABC 15's Christina Estes was at the memorial service today where she talked to some of Officer Wolf's friends. Christina? But when you lose someone you care about, it can sometimes be hard to put into words just what that person meant to you. But at today's memorial service, we got a good sense of the man who wore badge number 7215. Nobody wants to say goodbye to an honest, a good hero. Phoenix Mayor Phil Gordon calls Jason Wolf a hero. His fellow officers call him a friend. I already miss your awesome smile and the hours of laughing we shared. It's that smile his police academy classmates remember, too. He had a great sense of humor. And a great commitment to serving his community. And in the academy, he was just always wired. I mean, his, his life was to be a police officer. The guy had his uniforms bought before we started the academy. Jason was always, he was always one of the top people in our class. He was one of the top shooters. He was one of the top guys for physical fitness and running. Jason could run, and we would always send him up to be with Sergeant Williams, who was at the head of the class on the runs. When he would talk with her, it would slow her down so that it would make the entire class look like we were running faster. That doesn't surprise me. I'm pretty sure they've probably done that a few times. But what he doesn't know is I was already tired, and that's about as fast as I was going to go anyway. Sergeant Lori Williams led Officer Wolf and his fellow cadets in the academy. I have a tough time dealing with her thinking about it because I see them as, uh, in a way, kids that you're bringing up. And like a parent, there comes a time when you must let them go and hope they'll do the right thing. In this case, Williams says they did. I really do think that these guys were doing something heroic and that their hearts were in the right place, and it was to help somebody and save somebody. And Officer Jason Wolf leaves behind a wife and two sons. Christina, thanks. You know, after the ceremony, an amazing sight on city streets, perhaps you saw it, hundreds of police cars in procession to the cemetery, many in the valley stopping, even for a moment, to bow their head, offer a prayer, or just simply pay respect to a man they never even met. ABC 15's Lisa Volonek was there. An impressive sight on city streets, but those inside the vehicles have lost one of their own. It's a tragedy to not just the officers that get hurt or get killed, it's a tragedy to their families, to their police families. Mike Tennant knows firsthand. He's been with Scottsdale Police for 30 years and wanted to bring his grandson, DJ, to watch the motorcade. To start him out at that age, that he needs to understand what respect is and to show him the dedication that all police officers have for one another. None of these men and women have ever met Officer Jason Wolf, but have their own personal reasons for being here. Respect. Plain and simple, just respect. You know, we need to really support the officers. Just honor them, and I thank God for them every day when they go to work. They're laying down their lives for us. Um, just show the family support and love and to let them know that they're in our prayers and we're thinking about them. It breaks my heart for the families, um, but it is nice to see this unity in, with all the officers. Nearly 2,000 turn out to pay their final respects to Officer Jason Wolf, but back here at the apartment complex where both he and Officer Eric White lost their lives, a very obvious reminder that an entire community is grieving. God bless you and thank you because you made a big sacrifice. Our prayers are with you, our love is with you, and we just, we feel, we feel for you. Lisa Volonek, ABC 15 News, your Valley News leader. This is a long day, to say the least, for officers at Squaw Peak Precinct. As you know, a second officer was killed in the line of duty on Saturday. Tonight, hundreds are gathering for visitation services to honor 30-year-old Officer Eric White. Officers White and Wolf were both shot and killed after responding to that shooting call on Saturday. You are looking now at a live picture from outside the visitation services for Officer Eric White. The services are open to the public. They're open for you to go. 
until about 8 this evening. We have been overwhelmed here at ABC 15 with folks calling up or emailing wanting to get messages to the family. We've made that available for you. In fact, if you'd like to send them a message, you can do it on our website at abc15.com. We've set up a community care card for you to share your thoughts with the families of Officer Jason Wolf and Eric White. We'll deliver these messages to the officer's family. In fact, I'll give you a sample of one of them. B.J. Fowler writes, Our prayers are with both families at this time of sorrow. No words can express our thanks and gratitude to them and their loved ones. The sacrifice they have made will never be forgotten. We are out here at the phone bank already again, and we have just had a wonderful response. Of course, this is happening for the 100 Club. It was the least we could do. Joining us first is Mayor Phil Gordon. You know, we're seeing, we're talking about this happening all week. Five officers shot in five days, but at the same time, we see the goodness of the valley. We see thousands of people coming out, lining the streets. It has to feel good when you see that. Uh, it, it, I'll tell you, it takes away a lot of the pain to the officers, their family, the community's healing this way, and the outpouring is just phenomenal. We, excuse me, we've got to get the call. Yeah, we can let you answer the phone. We should mention that oh, he's out here answering the phones right Hi, now and uh, hundred, taking donation donations as well. In the meantime, we can talk to Sharon. You lost your husband several years back, a DPS officer. Yes. We all remember that day as well. This has to bring back a lot of emotions for you. But again, as we were talking about, good emotions too, taking away some of the pain because of this phone bank. It does. I feel like um, every time I see a pledge come through, it reminds me of that support and it kind of warms my heart all over okay. again. And just it just moves me beyond words because I know what it will do for these families. It, it helps them to remember that there's still hope. And, and speaking of still hope, you have such a tough job as well when you talk to other families. What is even said to you that was of comfort at that time? Well, I think sometimes it was things that weren't said that was the most comfort. Um, I don't think there's really those magic words. People ask me about that all the time. I think just sharing a tear, putting your arms around people, and just telling them thank you, and, and I'm just sorry for your loss is, is really about all you can say. The most important thing as well. We want to speak with the mayor again. I know we can let them get the phone for you. What did the last caller have to say? Um, just was uh, a young woman that said she wanted to make sure she donated for the families and to say thank you to the families for their sacrifice and we're sorry to lose an officers in, in the city. Mm -hmm. You're calling uh, today at the funeral calling this officer a hero. Is that the same sort of th message you'll have tomorrow? Um, yes, I um, tried to write my thoughts last night to uh, this family and we'll do the same tonight but they're all heroes and yes. not only those that have given their lives but uh, those that go on the street every day and fortunately don't ever have to uh, come home uh, either <laughs> yeah. wounded or never come home. I know it's 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 great to see too all the officers out here as well as you Mayor Phil Gordon. Uh, we are going to send it back but we do want to let you know that since there are a few phone lines that are very busy as you're trying to get through you can also head to our website at abc15.com we'll direct you to their website to make even more donations to the 100 Club. Jonathan? All right Katie thanks very much we should let you know that we did this on Tuesday we raised ten thousand six hundred dollars in two hours that's why they're back there, so go ahead and make a, a donation. You can just call the number on your screen. Turning our attention now to the weather, and if you've been outside recently, boy, it is blowing in some areas pretty hard. In fact, we heard about some damage in Fountain Hills. Bill's been covering it all. And yeah. Tell us what's going on out there, Bellis. Well, at least the good news in terms of severe weather, Jonathan, here. It's all moved east and northeast of Fountain Hills. It's a severe thunderstorm warning still for eastern and northeastern Maricopa County, up around Sunflower for the next 20 minutes, but not much else happening here in the valley. We do have a lone thunderstorm just to the southeast of Apache Junction. That also is moving northeast at 15 to 20 miles an hour. There's not a whole lot of activity behind this, but boy, earlier, Chopper 15 picking this up. Have a look. 60 mile an hour winds. This is out over Mesa. 500 people still without power, but the good news that power, as we speak, slowly but surely beginning to get turned back on. But hey, it's the nature of the monsoon. Only a small, small fraction of us here in the valley picking up some rain, but you, know, you just can't, most of the time, you can't get rain without severe weather during the monsoon. Of course, we'll have more on this, plus the latest on Francis and Howard coming up in weather. Time now to talk politics, Democracy 2004 for you this evening. The race for the White House is heating up with both candidates' campaigns in full swing. Democratic candidate John Kerry wasted no time in getting back to the campaign. In fact, he held a midnight rally in Springfield, Ohio, to try and combat President Bush's acceptance speech, which was made just a few minutes earlier. Kerry held off campaigning, though, during the RNC. But in the meantime, President Bush also wasted no time hitting the campaign trail. He was in Pennsylvania today talking about several of his new campaign themes, including the economy.
We are just getting started here on the six o'clock difference. Can we tell you six more than six thousand dollars has been raised in just one hour by you, our ABC 15 viewers, calling in to pledge your donation for the 100 Club. We're going to leave the number up. They'll be there till seven o'clock, and I can't tell you how oh, good it makes so many of great. us feel. Thanks for calling in, and the phone lines again open until seven. More news for you right after this. This burger's good. Back now on the 6 o'clock difference, checking out Wall Street, a down day across the board. The Dow is off 30, the Nasdaq and the S&P also pointing in the down direction. Time for your Consumer Minute tonight. An established Valley Resort is closing its doors, but first, American Airlines is following Northwest lead, as we told you about. They will also begin adding new fees on Monday. The airline will tack on an additional 5 bucks if you buy a ticket by phone and 10 bucks if you buy it at the airport ticket counter. American hopes to bring an additional $25 million, which should obviously help offset the rising jet fuel costs. After 45 years in the business, Mountain Shadows Resort, the Marriott in Paradise Valley, is closing its doors. The fate of the Marriott property is still up in the air, but the executive golf course and clubhouse will remain open until a decision is made. About 80% of the employees will transfer to other Marriott hotels in the valley. It's so hard when you see things closed because you have so many memories there. And it's sad it's, too. It's a nice yeah, place. It is. Hey, time for a quick break. We do want to remind you though, the phone bank is up and running. We partner with the 100 Club. We're raising some money for the families of those slain officers. You can give us a call. We'll leave this number up here and they will be here until 7 o'clock. You can make a donation. Again, all proceeds will be going to the two, fa two families. More news after this. Checking your hometown headlines, let's move to the west a little. California, a camper survives a bear attack. The 39-year-old man suffered claw wounds and was treated at the scene. The bear, weighed about 400 pounds, is apparently still in the area. We do not know what provoked this attack, if anything. Meantime, utility crews in Texas prepare for an emergency trip over to Florida. The crews have been busy packing up gear to help out after Hurricane Francis hits. Some of the workers just returned after repairing down lines from Hurricane Charlie. Bill? Yeah, that's right. Not only the hurricanes we're talking about, even some severe weather in the valley. It's good to see that monsoon back, but you know the way it goes. These storms can pack a punch. This is a video earlier from uh, Chopper 15 in Mesa. Look at all these trees down. As we speak, 500 people without power after 60 mile an hour winds just ripped through parts of the east and southeast valley. Then that storm moved up into Fountain Hills, also producing some damage and as well as a half an inch of rain. That's the part we need, the rainfall. We do not need the severe weather, but it's the monsoon, it's isolated, and that's the way it's going to be. The good news here, there's still a slight chance of rain in the forecast, at least through the holiday weekend. I wouldn't cancel plans, but if you do have plans, a little golf, a little camping, a little barbecue, keep an eye to the sky late in the afternoon hours. Temperatures, yeah, it's hot out there, 105. We're now down to 98, but the humidity is way up, 24%. There's that dew point, that magical number that represents moisture in the atmosphere. Once we get that to 55, there's a decent chance, combined with the heating of the day of at least producing a few showers and thunderstorms. Let's talk radar. I'm going to stop it here, so bear with me. Right at about 515, that's the storm that was prompted in a severe thunderstorm warning right over Mesa. And then watch, it just ripped through Fountain Hills. These storms moving over 30 miles an hour and moving off to the northeast. Right now, most of the action away from us may catch a few showers in this extreme southeast valley around Chandler Heights, but there's not much more behind this. So we pretty much are in the clear for tonight. The question here, why are we getting this? We have low pressure and it's a vigorous upper level low, very unusual for this time of the year. In addition, we're getting a cold front attached to that. So that's providing some spark in the upper parts of the atmosphere. A few scattered showers from flag up through Page in the Grand Canyon had a wind gust up in Page at three o'clock this afternoon, up to 66 miles an hour. Now what's happening also in the upper parts of the atmosphere is Howard. It's a hurricane, top winds 95 miles an hour. It's really moving very slowly off to the north northwest five to ten miles an hour but it's the combination of that cold front and the moisture from Howard that is pretty much converging over the state of Arizona so a slight chance of thunderstorms in the forecast tonight through the holiday time frame. Let's talk Francis right now. Continues to weaken. This is actually old data, 115 mile an hour winds, now down to 105. Did I get that right, John? 105, which makes it a category two. And the movement is now down to four miles an hour, but it's still a massive storm and it is pounding parts of the Bahamas. All right, let's check the radar here. And you're gonna see some of these feeder bands just moving on through. And keep in mind, the storm is still a good 12 to 18 hours away from making landfall in Florida. Have a look at this. The surfers are out in full swing in Miami. Waves there estimated from four to eight feet. I'll tell you what, 12 hours from now, 
I guarantee these guys will not be out there. Let's check your seven.